Welcome, my name is Tammy Burrows and I'm the Effective Practice Lead for HMIP. My intention today is to give you a brief overview of the thematic inspection on the experiences of black and mixed heritage boys in the youth justice system before introducing you to the Effective Practice Guide and then asking you to reflect on your own personal experiences of what you've heard. The thematic inspection report was published in October 2021 and can be accessed via our website at the address shown here. The findings were based on nine fieldwork sites which can be seen here. As part of the inspection we interviewed practitioners, inspected pre-sentence reports, inspected cases across domains two and three and user voice interviewed 38 boys and spoke with a small number of parents. We also conducted electronic surveys with case managing staff, volunteers, parents and magistrates, held focus groups with a range of senior managers, case managers, partnership staff, volunteers and leaders, and held national meetings with the Home Office, Ofsted, PCCs, YJB and others. In relation to the inspection findings, in governance and leadership, we found disproportionality is prioritised in the youth justice plans, but there's been limited action and progress. YOS boards lack detailed knowledge about the needs of black and mixed heritage boys. YOS managers are strong advocates for the boys in the justice system. Management oversight was inadequate in over half of the cases. In relation to staffing, most staff had received unconscious bias training and race equality training, but casework suggested this is not sufficient. Staff induction and supervision is not sufficiently focused on diversity. There is a lack of black and mixed heritage male staff and mentors in most services. With regard to partnership and services, there is concern about the use of stop and search and forceful restraint used on black and mixed heritage boys, especially in London. There's a lack of specialist support available to the parents of these boys and unmet special educational needs and speech and language communication needs are considered higher for this cohort. Most youth justice services commented on disproportionate exclusion for black and mixed heritage boys and in eight of the 25 remand cases accessing suitable and timely accommodation was an issue. With regard to assessment planning and delivery, in statutory cases only 10% of assessments explored the impact of discrimination and 24% of plans took sufficient account of diversity. Where identified as needed, Substance misuse was addressed in 53% of the cases, mental health in 48% of the cases, discrimination in 40% of the cases, and self-identity was addressed in 29% of the cases. These findings clearly have implications across all of the domains HMIP inspect, but for the purpose of today, we'll focus on those impacting directly on supervision to enable you to reflect on any implications for your practice. Notably from this inspection and our standards, the importance of an individualised approach is significant. How we experience relationships, our communities and society in general is specific to us, our circumstances, our culture and our upbringing to name just a few of the influencing factors. Think about those in your own family and friendships and your teams. You may come from different or similar backgrounds and cultures and yet you will experience stimuli differently you may well respond differently. It's important to understand this, and the same applies for the children you work with. The poem, called The British by Benjamin Zephaniah, speaks to the rich mix of cultures in the UK. Take a moment to reflect on how you, your experience with children on your caseload relates to this poem. Take some picks, Celts and Salors, and let them settle, then overrun them with Roman conquerors. Remove the Romans after approximately 400 years. Add lots of Norman French to some Angles, Saxons, Jutes and Vikings. And then stir vigorously. Mix some hot Chileans, cool Jamaicans, Dominicans, Trinidadians and Bayesians with some Ethiopians, Chinese, Vietnamese and Sudanese. Then take a blend of Somalians, Sri Lankans, Nigerians and Pakistanis combined with some Guyanese and turn up the heat. Sprinkle some fresh Indians, Malaysians, Bosnians, Iraqis and Bangladeshis, together with some Afghans, Spanish, Turkish, Kurdish, Japanese and Palestinians. Then add to the melting pot. Leave the ingredients to simmer. As they mix and blend, allow their languages to flourish, binding them together with English. Allow time to be cool. 
Add some unity, understanding and respect for the future. Serve with justice and enjoy. Note, all the ingredients are equally important. Treating one ingredient better than another will leave a bitter, unpleasant taste. Warning, an unequal spread of justice will damage the people and cause pain. Give justice and equality to all. Of course, many of you will be aware of the rich demographics of the areas in which you work. And it's important to think how we can use this knowledge to support effective work with children to promote desistance. We identified a number of examples of effective practice during the inspection and consequently we developed an effective practice guide. I plan to provide you with a brief overview of the contents. If you would like a copy of the report you can access via the website or you can use the QR code to take you directly to the guide. It is a multimedia resource with links to videos and tools which those we inspected have shared so I'd recommend reviewing the document but I've also compiled a list of hyperlinks to the reports mentioned and some of the pertinent links to be circulated after the event which you may find useful for peer discussions or team meetings. As an overview the guide explains what is important to consider ethnicity in practice it goes through our standards and expectations around leadership and case supervision when working with black and mixed heritage boys. There's a summary of the information the boys told us. There is then a focus on leadership and working in partnership. And within this, we look at examples of effective practice from Haringey's Disproportionality Project and the manager's intentional leadership, Hackney tackling disproportionality in stop and searches and in out of court disposals supported by two videos. Lewisham's anti-racist strategy, which also includes a video. Lewisham's specialist services provided by the Yoss family therapy team. There is then a focus on case supervision and we share key themes practitioners should consider in their work and interview two culturally competent practitioners to share practical tips from their work. We conclude with overall key takeaways and further reading and resources. Black and mixed heritage boys are often described as hard to reach and difficult to engage. It is really important to reflect on the why. What are the underlying causes of this? Black and mixed heritage boys face multiple and complex needs, as can be seen here. For example, they're more likely to be excluded, have higher emotional and mental health needs, and are more likely to have experienced discrimination, to name just a few of these needs. This was borne out in the inspection as from the case sample we found, a third were subject to child protection or child in need processes, over a third have been a victim of criminal exploitation, 60% have been excluded from school and the majority permanently, only 56% of the boys felt their PSR fully represented them. In a quarter of the cases where the information had been recorded, the child had a disability and half of the boys where information had been recorded had experienced racial discrimination. Therefore, proactive engagement is key. All of the practitioners we feature in the EP guide spoke to this and provided tips on building effective relationships. Notably, the Lewisham Family Therapy team recorded a short video where they talk about how they are intentional in all the work they do with the families. They plan and prepare before meeting and consider barriers such as previous experiences of racism and oppression. They shared that black families are often bruised and battered by not being able to get what they need. We acknowledge the journey, address commonalities and differences and put it on the table. They noted the boys spoke about racism being more covert in the UK. So they are clear that you have to ask the question if you don't create a space and a place where children, young people and parents are able to speak to their experiences, then anything we do as an intervention is going to be insufficient because it's not addressing their needs. We must recognise a child's individual circumstances to support effective desistance. Thinking on an individual level, it is important to consider the child's personal history, adverse childhood experiences, including racial trauma, attachments, development, emotional well-being and substance use to name a few but also personal relationships family peers associates partners they're also significant again everyone we spoke to for the ep guide highlighted the importance of working with parents and caregivers this relates equally to fathers as well as mothers which was not consistent from the inspection findings we share a video of the lewisham team discussing the significance of this 
As practitioners, it is also important to consider the community or the context in which the child's relationships occur, be it school, college, work or their local neighbourhoods. And, and also the societal factors such as the economic and social policies that influence social economic inequalities. In the EP guide, Hackney Yoss Manager shares their approach to dealing with stop and search in the area. It's interesting to hear how practitioners there are empowered to appropriately challenge police colleagues around stop and search, which was not the case across the country, as noted within informatic inspection. The Lewisham Family Therapy Team also recorded a third video for the EP Guide around the systemic approach, recognising that effective engagement oscillates around the ecosystem around the child. The inspection found that during the course of court orders, in three quarters of cases, workers developed meaningful trusting relationships with children. And in two thirds of cases, this also extended to relationships with parents or carers. To promote the connection further, more attention should be paid to identifying, analysing and addressing structural barriers that may impact on the child's progress. From the inspection, we identified nine themes which the report and EP guide explore. In summary, these include trust. It is important practitioners recognise the barriers to trust, externally acknowledge these, explore the impact and develop collaborative strategies to overcome them. It's not easy. You need to accept it's likely to take continuous effort to build. So be persistent. Try different approaches. We know it's not a one size fits all. As discussed, these boys have complex and often overlapping needs, which can feel overwhelming. So it's important to instill a sense of hope for the child and their family or carers. Assessments should analyse the underlying causes of offending behaviour and the complex interplay of multiple needs thoroughly and develop sentence plans accordingly, sequenced as appropriate. The boys indicated being aware of diversity and being able to openly discuss racial identities, culture, discrimination and disproportionality was more important than the ethnicity of their worker. Practitioners should think about diversity in terms of intersectionality, a term used to explain how different aspects of our identities, for example, gender, race, physical appearance and so forth, combine to create unique advantages, often described as privilege or disadvantages, often described as discrimination. Explore what it's like for the specific child in their specific circumstances and within their specific landscape so that you can really understand the lived experiences of that child. Recognise and celebrate all elements of diversity to illustrate that you value heritage. From the cases we inspected, it was evident that almost all of the boys had experienced loss and significant trauma in their formative years and experiences of racial discrimination had been a feature of their lives. Effective relationships are significant in facilitating change. It is important to create an environment where the child and their family feel safe to begin to see themselves differently and are equipped to build on these changes. Also linked to trauma, we should pay increased attention to understanding the impact of ACEs. They can rewire the brain structure, resulting in a permanent state of arousal. The best analogy I've ever heard for this is like a sensitive car alarm, which go just goes off in a slight breeze. It can go off at any time, not necessarily when directly triggered. Therefore, it is important to abide by the core values of trauma-informed practice, connect with the child, understand the functionality of any behaviour that they are displaying, as it may not be connected to the current external triggers. Show care and consistency, and where possible, as academic Kieran McCartan states, provide holistic, supportive and appropriate social emotional interventions. Also, a striking feature across eight of the nine yosses were that children grounded their offending in their environment and the influence of their peer group, which was an ongoing challenge and cause of stress. So engage in open discussions around the factors which have contributed to their offending. In addition, discuss culture, history and their experiences when trying to understand their current identity and the identity they desire to have. Increase the visibility of successful young black and mixed heritage men in discussions, examples used in interventions and posters in your premises. Seek a wide range of examples, not just those engaged in sport and music. You should empower children and their parents or carers to have aspirations and high expectations of themselves. 
A number of boys highlighted that they felt stereotyped by the criminal justice system and other systems such as education based on their ethnicity and that this led to them being treated unfairly. As in Desmond Tutu's famous quote, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. Therefore, it's really important to openly discuss it. Agree that it's not good enough. Challenge where you see it. Educate and empower children and their parents and carers to challenge discrimination and advocate on their behalf. Celebrate diversity and promote a sense of belonging. The boys spoke extensively about their experiences with the police. They felt that they were targeted and profiled in a way which did not happen to their white friends. Again, openly discuss it, challenge it where you see it and advocate on their behalf. And finally, with programmes interventions, the boys need to understand the purpose of interventions. Actively engage the child and their parent or carer in the assessment and planning stages so the interventions are tailored to the individual and to ensure that they understand the purpose. Have persistent high aspirations for this group of children. The persistence is important. It is often difficult for them to have these for themselves, especially when seen in the context of the disproportionality highlighted within the thematic inspection. In the guide, there is a printable information sheet of these and a summary of what practitioners can do. The guide has a section dedicated to the findings from User Voice, who interviewed 38 boys as part of this inspection. This includes a video of one of the peer researchers discussing what the boys shared, a poster explaining what the boys identified pillars of a good relationship with practitioners to be, for example, show interests, be available, be flexible, and a poster providing a summary of the solutions user voice identified from the research, for example, tailoring interventions, providing mentoring and support. The guide then explores the work of two culturally competent practitioners, and we ask them to share top tips for other practitioners. Examples being, take an inquisitive approach, asking questions and allowing each child to explain their identities. Be comfortable with making mistakes. Let these children know that you are always ready to hear when they are ready to talk about their experiences. Recognise the efforts of the child. Reflect on your practice. The Effective Practice Guide identifies key takeaways for casework, including it should have engagement at its core, grounded in desistance principles and procedural justice. Discrimination should be considered not only as a contributory factor to children's involvement in the youth justice system, but also as a potential barrier to them moving on with their lives. We should inquire about diversity, racial profiling and discrimination and take opportunities to explore those concepts with the boys. Leave them open throughout the period of your work with them. When undertaking assessments, ask children about their self-identity, including their ethnicity, personal circumstances and their experience of discrimination. Place their offending in context along with their lived experiences the challenges they face and that they continue to face. Children should be fully involved in planning their interventions so that they understand what will happen and why. The intervention should focus on their strengths and promote agreed long-term goals. They should be tailored to the needs of the individual child. They should both support and challenge the child so they're engaged actively in the process of change. Practitioners should share high aspirations with this group of children and practitioners should take opportunities to reflect on their practice themselves with colleagues and with managers and take thoughtful action as a result to improve their practice consistently. I would ask you to reflect on today's input and the reports and materials shared. I provided this sheet to help you do so and hopefully make a pledge to commit some actions moving forward to further improve your practice in this area. If you would like to share any thoughts or comments regarding your reflections, pledges or any of the content, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for your time today.